Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Border Hookups Go RVing. Today we're going to talk about 10 things that we actually use as full-time RVers. Stay tuned. That works. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about 10 things that we actually use on the road. And don't worry, we'll put all of the links in the description below. Number one is this set of sink strainers that we use. And the sink strainers go where the drain, the, the plug-in would go to your sink. And they prevent food items and debris from going down into your gray tank. You really don't want debris in there, it can start to smell and might clog things up. So these sink strainers are really awesome and they're pretty inexpensive so you can just change them out when they get dirty. Number two is a water pressure regulator. Now when we would go into campgrounds, um, we found obviously that every campground has different uh, water pressure levels. So this is a really important thing to have because um, if you go with water pressure that's too high, you can uh, blow out your pipes in your RV. They're a little bit different than your house. A lot of them are plastic and so they can blow out. Um, the other thing too is we used to just have a regulator that um, had kind of a, just slowed everything down no matter what, just got kind of a safety. We also have one of those, but the nice thing about this is that you can actually get the pressure up to where it's good for you in your RV, your shower pressure and everything is, is at the right level. Um, from what we were told, it's fit for older RVs, you want to be at about 50 PSI. Um, for newer RVs, 60. We err on the side of caution and we run everything at 50. So we just make sure that uh, we have one of these on. Um, do your own research on those levels for your RV though. Don't take my word for it. That's just what we run ours at and uh, it works for us. So number three is this flexible mesh grill mat. And I found this, uh, you can order it online, but I found this one at Fleet Farm. Is it Fleet Farm we were at? Mm -hmm. Fleet Farm. At, at Fleet Farm. And uh, it's great for grilling veggies on, on the grill. So we have an outdoor grill that we use this on. And uh, I also realized last night that I could use this for pizza in the oven. I wanted the pizza crust to get crispy. Uh, it was a cauliflower crust pizza, which was great, but I wanted it to get crispy. And so I didn't want to put it on a pan and I put it on here and just slid it in our little RV oven and it fit perfectly. In fact, it was a little bit long here and it just folded a little tiny bit. So it's nice that it's flexible. And this is uh, safe to wash in really hot water just to clean it off. You could put it in a dishwasher, but I don't know if there are RVs with dishwashers in them. I just know ours does not have one. It does not. <laughs> and our oven is about the size of an easy bake oven with a little light bulb it to cook not. the brownies. So this is perfect. <laughs> it is not. But yes, this is a flexible um, grill mat. Number four is this collapsible tire iron wrench. And I love this thing because for one thing, it collapses. And when you're full-time RVing, space is everything. <laughs> and we know that more than more than you know. Um, so I like this because it, it collapses down to a single uh, you know, piece and then it pops out and there's a little lock here that can make it go the other way. Now, what I really use this for, thank goodness we haven't blown a tire yet, just the bearing, mm -mm. Um, is that uh, it is used for our jacks, for our level, not our levelers, our, our, uh, our stabilizer Stabilizers. jacks. Um, and when I use the drills sometimes, they get a little rusty, so if I have to oil them and if they don't go down all the way, normally it's they won't go up all the way so they're flat, I, I get this out and I finish the job with this that the drill can't do. But I love these things because they're solid and they go small. Number five are some flexible uh, containers. And 
Uh, these are really good because, again, we don't have much storage in the RV. Uh, these are really, really handy. They store like this, but there are several different containers in here. And just a little demonstration. So everything goes in there flat, but as you can see, oh, we don't have the smallest one. We must be using it in the refrigerator. So you end up having three different sized containers. Oh, sorry, four, because we have one more that's in the refrigerator. And then again, they collapse down, which is nice. Um, also this strainer, which collapses down to flat because who wants to carry around a giant strainer? You don't use it that often, but it's something you need. And then it just pops out. See, voila. And it's also a hat. <laughs> Boy. I don't know. Um, one more thing are these uh, bowls. And I use these a lot and they're just nesting bowls. They have a couple of them in there and those save space as well. And as Dave said before, when you're living in your RV, you gotta use the best, yeah. the best use of space. You have to have the best use of space as possible. Number six, possibly one of the most important things that we actually did use and hopefully never have to use again uh -oh. is the fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. Now this is a, a, a second fire extinguisher that we have. Most RVs have one of these right inside of the door. Um, I bought this to have out in our outdoor kitchen because if something happens out there, I don't want to be fumbling to get into the camper to grab the other fire extinguisher. I want to have this one ready to go. And we actually used this one in our last episode when our bearing overheated on the road and I had to spray this all over this poor lady's driveway, <laughs> but it works. And it was nice to know that it, I have two spots that I can go to because if for some reason I had this outside and, and something happened and then I went to get inside and the door was locked. And it was on that mm -hmm. trip. And that was on that trip. And mm -hmm. it was a lot easier to get to the camp kitchen or the outdoor kitchen mm -hmm. to grab this baby. So fire extinguisher, you can't go wrong. To be honest with you, in my opinion, you should have one inside. If you have an outdoor kitchen, have one there. And you should also have one in the vehicle that you're towing yes. with. Just you can't. You can't go wrong and it's one of those items that you hope you wasted your money on spending because you never use it. Uh, number seven, my curling iron mat. It is the simplest little silicone mat that I saw uh, at Bed Bath & Beyond and I bought this just thinking it would be really uh, good because I could set my curling iron on it in the RV. So I'm not sure if I can even, I mean, you can figure it out. It basically goes on top like that. And when your curling iron's hot, you don't want it to burn anything. I don't uh, have I one. <laughs> I, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it to comment. So curling iron or straightener. Um, I have a straightener. I use it to straighten my hair and to curl my hair. Anyhow, and then after you use it, you can just roll it up hot. And this just, closes it up like that and then I put it down into my basket and I don't have to worry about it burning anything. And uh, I just think that this is the best invention ever. And I think that uh, you ladies out there will understand. Jacqueline doesn't know this, but I actually, when she's not around, I use a curling iron to heat my coffee up in the morning. I just put this in the coffee cup and it's a lot easier than doing it on the stove. So, cat's out of the bag. There's your curling iron back until I need it again. You realize you don't even drink coffee. I don't. <laughs> but it was a better story if I said I put it in my coffee. I don't drink coffee. Number eight. A tire thing again. <laughs> sort of. Well, this is to, to uh, um, use this to raise and lower your stabilizer jacks. It's genius. Whoever came up with this should win the Nobel Peace Prize because this thing is amazing and it goes really, really fast um, to get your jacks up and down. One day, and it's this little piece right here, so it just pops in, and one day I went to put our jacks up and the battery was dead. And that's the other thing, make sure you charge your batteries <laughs> at all times. And uh, I had to do it by hand. And that was mm. not fun. It took a while, it takes longer than you think. But this little guy, this little time saver, 
Um, just pops right into the, into the drill, locks down, sometimes the other way, anyway, locks in, and it's great for raising and lowering your stabilizer jacks, this little guy right here. Number nine is something that we use every single day. It's this Bose speaker, and it's a Bluetooth speaker, very small, portable. We use this, um, obviously, to listen to music, uh, but we also use it to run white noise at nighttime. Mm -hmm. We like to have a little bit of background noise and we have an app. Each of us have mm -hmm. one on our phone that uh, is for white noise. So we use the Bose speaker. We also take walks and Dave will throw it into his backpack so that we have some music uh, while we're taking a walk. And uh, it's never failed us. We've had this for quite a few years yep. before we even started RVing. And this mm -hmm. was something that made the cut and came with us. And the sound quality on this is really good. So this is the Bose SoundLink Mini. I actually, my brother has another Bose, not this one. And the difference in his speaker and this one is phenomenal. And when Jacqueline says that we go for walks with it, that's not walking through downtown parks. That's walking through the woods when there's nobody else around and we have it on. And we've used this when we've camped in state parks where it gets loud or private campgrounds and we just crank it in our camper with white noise right with mm -hmm. white noise and it sounds a lot like the blue angels landing <laughs> in our in our living room um, but we don't hear anything number 10 you get a twofer because I have two things over here and they both pertain to water one is this splitter and this is really nice. And the first time I saw one of these and actually in use was in Canada, somebody had uh, a, a larger rig and every site did not have its own water spigot. So what they did is they threw one of these on and ran one to their um, camp camper and the other one was freed up for everybody else. Nice. And it was really cool. And they could have easily just plugged in and taken over the spigot. But here they said, okay, Let's give um, this one for everybody else. And then we got a free uh, splitter out of the deal, so no, we didn't. But yeah, this thing is awesome. We're Canadians, so we try to be nice to everybody. We mm -hmm. have to be polite. You can't mm -hmm. take the last water spigot. No. So now you're a US citizen, so now <laughs> you can just be selfish and nasty, right? No? They didn't go over that in the test? <laughs> you're gonna make a lot of people mad. Probably. <laughs> great little unit though and the other thing the twofer is treatment water treatment we put this in every time we fill um, and we don't always to be honest with you we don't always hook up to the water and camp, water campgrounds we a lot of times we'll just fill our tank let it run get lower fill it again treat it so the water is really not in there very long but we still treat it and we really like this stuff we haven't tried any other products like this but this one works so we're gonna mm -hmm. stick with it Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Border Hookups Go RVing. Please remember to subscribe and ding that bell so that we can notify you as to when we have more episodes coming. And if you liked what you saw, please hit the little thumbs up button and feel free to comment below. We love reading all of your comments and we hope to see you all out there. We'll see you all out there.